The Soyuz has landed, but not without some trouble. The Russian spacecraft carrying American astronaut Ron Garin and two cosmonauts safely landed in Kazakhstan this morning. But Mission Control lost contact with the capsule for several minutes after the craft deorbited. It was certainly a nerve-wracking morning for NASA. The U.S. Space Agency is counting on Soyuz spacecraft to ferry Americans into space now that the shuttle program has ended. So for more, CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us from the Kennedy Space Center. Bill, good morning to you. Hey, good morning. So what can you tell us about this landing? Why was communication lost? Well, we don't know, Betty. You know, you have to remember this is being controlled by the Russians out of a flight control center in Moscow. And of course, the spacecraft's coming down from orbit to a landing site in Kazakhstan. All we know for sure is shortly before atmospheric entry, uh, they did lose all communications with the spacecraft. Uh, they repeatedly called them, kept asking them to please check in, please check in. You know, it was eerily reminiscent back in 2003 when Columbia came down and we kept hearing Mission Control in Houston, you know, call out comm checks trying to get them to answer. Uh, obviously, there were no major problems today. The spacecraft landed safely. And so I guess at the end of the day, you'll view this as a is a minor glitch, but you're quite correct. It did get everybody's attention, that's for sure. No doubt we were on edge here as well. Uh, and in light of what happened last month, an unmanned Russian rocket that crashed, and now you see today's incident, what's the feeling at NASA? Are officials there comfortable relying on the Russians? Well, a couple of points. First of all, the Soyuz rocket has a long, long history of successful flights. Now, they've lost something like 20 of these in 750 missions. It's a very reliable rocket. I think NASA has high confidence that the Russians will figure out what caused the problem and they'll fix it. Uh, but it certainly does bring to light the, the problem for American space policy and that two administrations have decided to end shuttle operations before there was a replacement spacecraft built by the Americans. And what that means is it's not that anybody's particularly nervous about the Soyuz, but they're down to one rocket. If you have a problem with that rocket, you have no way to get anybody to or from, you know, up to the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. So. It's really what they call single string failure at this point. There's no redundancy. And that has a lot of folks at NASA a bit concerned. And it's, it's quite a coincidence that the first flight uh, to the station after the last shuttle mission, you know, was a disaster for this unmanned uh, progress supply flight. And now the Soyuz missions that carry astronauts and cosmonauts, they're grounded as well. They're hoping to resume flights in mid-November, uh, but they haven't got it completely resolved yet. And we're going to have to wait and see how it plays out. I want to get back to the crash for just a second because it's called into question the immediate future of the International Space Station. There is a possibility that the station may have to be evacuated, correct? Well, there is. Here's the thing. Uh, the crew that's left up there right now, uh, led by Expedition uh, 29 Commander Mike Fossum, they have to land by around November 22nd at the latest. If they go later than that, they have to land in darkness and the Russians won't do that for safety reasons. So they're coming down on November the 22nd. Right now, the next Soyuz carrying a crew is scheduled for launch on November the 14th. There's not much time there. If they have any problems getting the Soyuz rockets fixed and ready to fly, then you're right. They would have to bring these three guys down and leave the station unmanned for at least a short period. Now, they built the station to be able to do that. They can run it from the ground, but they don't want to do that if they don't have to. I mean, obviously, if something breaks and there's no one there to fix it, the station could be in pretty big trouble pretty quick. But they're hoping it won't come to that. The Russians said today they think they can launch on the 14th, and, of course, if they do, this becomes a moot point. Well, we've been talking a lot about reducing the debt in this country, you know, and there's a lot of talk about making cuts to big-ticket items such as Social Security and Medicare. Is NASA concerned about falling victim to budget cuts as well? Oh, sure. You know, I mean, they're going to take hits like every other federal agency, and, of course, they're under a lot of pressure. Uh, to both get some new commercial rockets built that can carry people to and from the station, uh, as well as, as you saw this week, Betty, they unveiled plans for this big new super rocket uh, to do deep space exploration, take astronauts to asteroids and eventually Mars. Any big cuts to the budget obviously will stretch that program out, and so there's a lot of uncertainty. They're, they're obviously worried about the budget. It's going to uh, be interesting to see how that plays out as well, but I think there's a lot of concern uh, both in this country and in Russia. All right. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood at the Kennedy Space Center. Thanks for joining us. We do appreciate it, Bill. Sure thing.